Hey guys, how do you do? Welcome to Tradition Programming Users. So, guys, for the first today, it's going to be uh, we're going to see how to save data into our MySQL database. But then, before that one, uh, let me just inform you guys that we're trying to change some of the policies for our channel. And that is uh, one of the things that Shell nowadays be doing is to be sh trying to post shorter videos. Most of our tutorials, if you normally look at them, they will lose around 40, 50 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, because we normally try to do everything from scratch, by from creating a project to running to everything. But then we want to be uh, doing that one. Instead, what shall be trying to do? We shall simply be trying to explain more, and then we are going to, at the end of the day, providing source code in our website where we shall be uh, doing those particular, of course, uh, explanations. So. For us, we won't be compromising on quality, of course. It, that is, it will even be more of quality now because uh, we shall just be trying to concentrate on the bigger picture, the important points. Then, if you want the full source code now, we have our tutorials website. You shall get the source code right over there in text format, but then also in zip format. We shall also be posting it in GitHub link. Okay. So, this for today, we're going to see how to save data into a MySQL database. And in the next tutorial, we shall see how we can retrieve that particular data and then show it in as some component. So we are having our database, SoccerDB. SoccerDB is our table, then here is our database. Take note of the data we have. If we come here, click to add, you can see successfully saved. Now we come over right here, click refresh, we refresh our data. Now, guys, we come over right here, we refresh, you can see right here, of course, we have our data over here. What if we come, we add another one over right here, it gets added. We come, of course, we refresh our data, then we see all the changes over here. So, of course, once we refresh over right here, you can see this is our data we're having. So, guys, you can see we are successfully saving our data into our database. This is what we're going to see. We're going to see how to course save data into our MySQL database from our Android application so guys let's move on to our PHP code what you guys to do is to come over here and of course create our PHP code you can see right here of course I have my PHP code then you can see we are simply uh, this is where we are receiving our data you can see for instance we shall be passing a key name key position and then key team then we have this name position of the team variable so these are what we shall be passing of course these are our table these are column names in our database so the data that we've received we're going to pass it over here so guys you can see this is our code this is what we're going to be doing now for us uh this one we are require you guys to save it in the root directory of your server for instance instead of using the WAMP server so what you need to do just come click save us then go to your root directory if you're using the WAMP your root directory of course going to be the www directory you can optionally create a folder just as i've done then you save it over there so make sure that you do uh, that one of course uh, at the root directory for your server whatever server you're using then come over to our build of credit for me of course uh, these are the what i'm having in my build of credit then we're going to move to our manifest the manifest uh, the only requirement is for you to add this particular permission so please uh, do so now once we've done that one i require you guys to go ahead and create three more projects of course you're having your main activity go ahead create two uh three not three more projects three more classes connector data packager and then center now for us our connector this is the class that shall enable us to perform our of course it's a class so we shall of course be establishing our connection we're going to be using the http url connection so the first thing within this particular class we will need to create a simple method we're going to have it we're going to make it a static this particular method is going to return for us an http url connection so let's come over right here of course you can see we are passing in an address the address is going to represent the url that shall be connecting to so once we've done that one now this is what we're going to do first you can see we're going to instantiate our java.net.url over right here in fact, uh, these are the stuff that we've imported. You can see, I've pre-typed my code, URL, URL equal to new URL, and we're passing in an address. This is going to give us an instance of uh, java.net.url, which shall use to open our connection. Now, for us, this is a HTTP URL connection. It's a subclass of uh, java.net.url connection. So to open it, to get, of course, a connection instance, we're simply going to come, call 
url.open connection then you're going to cast uh, this one to http url connection because that's what we're using so of course we come we come set our properties our connection properties now for this our connection okay what are you do making we're making a post request by default is normally a get request now for us this one why you're making a post request is because actually we shall be modifying our uh, resource in the server our remote resource in the server we shall be saving data we shall be sending data to our server we shall not just be reading suppose we're supposed only to read then we would have made a get request which is normally the default one for http url connection to set it we simply come over right i have the post now with the post you can either read or write to that particular resource then you set the timeout then the read timeout connect timeout the time it will take to connect uh, okay before it throws an out an error and also the read time of right here now set do input uh, this is just specifying that these are connections going to support input and then of course set output right here yes going to support output because remember we are outputting our data but we're also going to be setting it should uh, support input of course which of course uh, post request normally do because remember we should also be getting a response from our server we save then we get a response this will be catching a malformed URL exception instead if, if in case you specify the wrong URL format and also IO exception right here so that's it we can return our connection at the is return another data package a class the purpose of this class is simple as you can see right here it's going to pack for us the data and then encode it in a format that can be sent over the network for us what is this data going to be consisting of remember we had the name we had the position we had the team from our edit text yes this is the data that shall be getting now where shall we be getting them from well we're going to be getting them by our constructor so we come over right here we get our data and then of course we assign them right here okay so this is the data that we want to uh, package so that we can send it appropriately over the network so our next step once we've received this particular data is to add them to a json object to do that one this is what we're going to do over right here we're going to just create a simple method i've called it pack data you can see we shall just be of course packing this particular data into a json we add it into a json object first we're going to instantiate our json object over right here then we're also going to have a string buffer that we're going to call packed data so we have that one then inside the try catch block actually what we're doing right here we are going to be catching first the io of course the json exception over right here so you come and say jo dot put what we're doing we're putting the data remember we've received data name position and then the team who are signing them over right here and then guys remember our php code that i showed you guys yeah you remember the keys that we specified please come over right here and make sure that you specify the same same keys over there okay so have you treat there of course these ones for me they correspond to the name in my table actually my table columns so these are my table columns it's the same sentence that we specified of course in our php code you remember them you can go back and have a look at them so name is going to correspond this is the key and then of course the value is the name we shall receive post then position we're receiving team and then of course the team okay let's create a simple boolean right here that's going to detect for us the first value now for us let's come it equal to j or this is an iterator j or this is a json object dot keys we get the keys in fact for us of course the keys are these ones we get them from our json object then we're going to inside that do while loop we're going to loop uh, through those particular keys what should we do next well we're looping through the keys of us to get a single key it dot next it's an object we can say to string but then we have the value so we have the key so we can use the key to get our value so yes this is it first value it's true so this is going to of course a uh, result to true then we set our first value to false otherwise we come over right here and then pack data dot append what we're trying to do we're trying to uh, skip appending this one before our first value remember we want to skip after the first value is when we want to add this particular sign over there okay so that's it then we come over right here pack data dot append then whatever we're appending of course we're encoding it to a utf8 format first of course we come key then of course right here the equal sign 
and then we come and then the value so you can see key equal to value that's basically what we're saying then we come over right here while each dot has next it of course is our iterator then we come right here return pack data to string pack data with a json object we come cast it to string and that's it we're going to cast the unsupported encoding exception in case we have an exception while encoding and also just an exception in case we have a json exception or while uh, adding our data to our json object that's it guys that's our packed in fact uh, let's come over right here this is our data package a class is going to pack for us data that we're going to send via the network to a sender class this is sender class this is something we're going to this is how we shall be sending our data to of course over the network from my school database but then for this one we want to make sure that we do it in an async task in a background thread now for us the first thing of course to do that one is to make it to extend async task so once we've done that one you can see i'm having several fields right here all of these ones now the first three ones these ones over right here will be getting them via the constructor i need the context to show my progress dialog i need the url address they shall be passed to a connect method of a connector class so that you can connect to that particular url i need these three edit text so that we can use them of course we can obtain data from them using the get text method the method the data the name position of them of course the team then of course once i've obtained them i'm going to save them in these particular variables progress dialog is something that we're going to be showing while we are trying to send our data over the network so yes we said we're going to have these ones for the constructor so we come over right here this of course is my comment right here okay so this is our constructor it's a sender this is a sender class remember we're passing in the context the url address and then the edit text you're passing the right here as a param so what we're going to be doing this works like an array so we we'll will simply come over right here specify the position of course zero the first item that shall be sent then of course the second then the third one right here okay so the first one is name position then of course the team these are edit text objects okay then of course we come we obtain the name just as we said from them then of course also the position and then the team we assign them over there to uh, the variables that we declared so guys that's it let's next move to our on pre-execute method so guys here is our own pre-execute method what we want to do we want to be more friendly to the user while we're sending our data we want to show him a progress dialog so that he can see that at least something is happening for us we're just going to tell him send of course that's the title then sending please wait then of course we show that particular progress dialog this particular own pre-execute shall get fired just before doing background that is just before we start our background uh, thread okay so that's what we're going to be doing now for us the background job this is where we're going to be performing it right here you can see inside our doing background method it's not taking anything then we shall be returning a string now for us this particular send method don't worry about it we shall create it in a short while you can see what we're doing we shall just be sending data over the network so all our implementations we shall do them inside this particular send method now the next thing once our doing background message has been called then of course our on post execute is going to be called the first thing we want to make sure is that we dismiss our progress dialog then remember our doing background message was supposed to return for us a string that is our response now that particular which is going to check if it's null then we're going to say over right here response of course if it is not null that is of course we're going to display it it's a string remember and then of course we save this one otherwise we're going to say unsuccessful okay because that if it's null then we don't have any response then that's going to mean that we've not successfully saved our data well the next thing is we are through with those particular methods that we overrode the next thing we're going to say we're going to implement how we're going to send our data we're going to have this particular method sent is going to return for us a string the first thing of course we establish our connection by calling the connect we pass the url address this is going to give us a http url connection object we assign it over right here we're going to check first if it's null if it's not null then we're going to proceed now for us we will be sending an out uh, our data of course so we're going we need to get the output stream from our connection okay from our http url connection instance to 
to get it, we use the get output stream over right here. With this one, we shall have to catch our IO exception. Okay, we we'll do so. Then we come over right here. We need to write uh, data to this particular output stream. Yes, we have a stream. Now we need to write the data that we want to send to this particular stream. To do that one, we're going to use the buffer greater. So we instantiate it. We pass in an instance of output stream greater. Then we are going to pass in, of course, the encoding format and then, of course, the data, uh, the output stream itself. That's it. We write it. Now, for us, for us writing it, we need to pass in this particular string that we want to write. Now, once we write, of course, right here, we pass in the name position that the team then called the pack data, which, of course, is going to prepare for other string. We come. We just ensure that we've uh, written our stuff. Okay by calling the flash method that everything's been written then of course we come over right here then release the resources we're occupying that's it now we need to get a response we've tried to write data but have we written it or we've not so we're going to come right here get response code if it's uh, con.http okay right here this particular constant then that means that yes we've uh, at least gotten a response now we're going to come read that particular response we need to know the type of response it is now buffered reader we're going to use it we'll pass in an instance of input stream reader then we also pass in the input stream over right there then we're going to use the string buffer we're going to instantiate it then we have this particular line right here so next we're going to be reading data line by line and then assigning it to this line at the same time checking if it's not null then we append that particular line to our response at the end of the day we come we close our buffer reader to release our res uh, resources then we come return our resource now take note it's a it was a buffer string buffer we cast it to string then return it guys does it of course it shall be passed to our do in background method right here this is why we're implementing it then over right here the response we shall receive it guys does it that's our sender class okay the next thing that we're going to do let's move to our main activity over right here you need to specify the let's come over right here first you specify your url address then of course the edit text that we're gonna use name position team then we're also going to have our save button then of course we first initialize this particular ui first that's easy then of course once we've done that one we have our save button and then we're going to instantiate our sender remember our sender Yes, equal to new sender then we pass in this stuff right here then we call execute this does it does it i'm hoping you guys have learned something now for us of course the first thing you have to make sure you've added this particular connection uh permission for connection to the internet let's run our project and see what we have okay we are with our project now for us it's going to be simple what we're going to be doing we have all this particular data we want to save we come click save okay sending then successfully saved if we come over right here refresh our project then we're going to be able to see our data over right here then hazard that we just added you can see over right here this does it i hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial please if you have hit the like button share this video with friends and family and guys i'm also hoping that i'll finish this tutorial in less than 15 minutes let me say that one okay so if you love the tutorial, please like it, share it. We are, as I said, we shall be trying to do shorter tutorials and also just focusing more on explaining rather than uh, writing, rather than showing off my typing.